It's the Million Dollar Organizer Show, tips for professional union organizers. Win more campaigns, balance work and family, and leave the competition in the dust. Now here's your host, Bob Odie. Hello, union organizers and future union organizers. This is podcast episode number 43. Today, we're talking about the sad passing of AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka of a heart attack at age 72 our deepest sympathy to his family and friends. I had the pleasure of meeting Richard Trumka and having my photo taken with him when he visited a labor event here in Los Angeles. President Joe Biden recently said that Richard was a fierce and forceful champion for the dignity of the American worker. But let's take it a little further. President Trumka was not only a champion of the American worker, but of workers worldwide. So yes, 12 and a half million members of the AFL-CIO mourn his passing. But his legacy is even bigger than that. President Trumka was born in a coal town of Nemecolon, Pennsylvania. He was a third-generation coal miner. Back in 1989, he was the president of the United Mine Workers of America, UMWA. He led a strike against Pittston Coal Company, and it was successful. He had a lifelong devotion to the labor movement. Dying in office, he never enjoyed a minute of retirement. Liz Shuler will fulfill the remainder of Richard Trumka's term as AFL-CIO president. As Liz Shuler says, we will honor his legacy with action. I can't help but think it's a shame whenever a labor leader sticks around so long they end up dying in office. There's really no need for it life is too short. We should encourage each other to retire in our prime. In my book, The Million Dollar Organizer, I tell the story of a co-worker of mine. He and his wife were doing quite well. They had sold their house in the city and bought a beautiful cabin near Big Bear Lake. They intended to spend their golden years together, enjoying the slower-paced mountain lifestyle. To hear him describe the neighborhood, it was obvious he had done his homework to find the perfect place. He even tried to talk me into buying a place up there so we could be neighbors. Anyway, a new administration had come into office around the time and needed help. He put off retirement for a spell to assist the fledgling group. I'm sure he only intended to work a few months, but a few months became six months, six months became a year, a year became two years, and, well, you understand. His wife occupied the cabin while he stayed behind, holed up in a cheap hotel in the city. Time passed, and before he knew it, his wife became ill and died all alone. After that, he immersed himself in his work. Friends begged him to retire. He just wouldn't do it. He was set financially, but he lived very simply, working long hours, didn't take time off, and drove an ugly station wagon. Eventually, he became ill and died. And at his funeral, one person after another got up to speak about him, and how much he had helped them. While many of us were in awe of his service to the members, we wished he had taken time to retire and enjoy life. We couldn't help but feel he worked all those years and never really lived. Thanks for listening. We hope that you'll subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Give us a five-star review and let us know what you'd like to hear the Million Dollar Organizer talk about. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Union Organizer. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.